What is going on, YouTube people? The Occurrence and Comics here. The struggle continues to be real as I am fighting through a head cold. I got the sore throat, a little drainage, whole nine yards. Fun times when you are trying to record YouTube videos, let me tell you. We'll see how many breaks and pauses I have to take for coughing fits during this one. Might be a little bit shorter episode than normal. Let's just go ahead and dive right in because I am not sure how long my voice is going to last. The show must go on. Burbank weekend. Uh, I'm going to rely on you boys and girls for the eyes and ears on this one. I've not heard much from Burbank. A couple of the dealers that I know that normally set up were not able to this time. I don't typically know anyone that attends that. I mean, I know people that attend that show, but I don't know. People that I usually chat with uh, are not attending that show this time around. So, if you were there, if you were a dealer, if you were just walking the show floor, what were the vibes? Was it busy? What was moving? What wasn't moving? They have done a tremendous job building up that show over the last year or so. So that's kind of one of the big things going on this weekend in sports. Other big things. Top Series 1 released this week. We'll dig a little bit more into that later in the video. I thought, listen, and I even went back and double-checked. I swore Prison Basketball came out on the 14th. I guess it got delayed a week. Uh, I think it's coming out this week now. I don't even know anymore. I don't even know. I double-checked it. There was multiple things that said Valentine's Day for the release date, and then it didn't actually come out. So I don't know if I just read something wrong, saw something wrong. I don't know. So maybe it's out this week. Like I said before, uh, I was interested in kind of watching some breaks of that. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Victor later in the episode as he is the big chase in that product. Series one. Uh, I So I decided not to buy a case. I, I did pick up. So I had the two jumbos and two hobby boxes that I pre-ordered from Tops. Opened all those. I have the five blasters coming from Fanatics. Those actually shipped uh, Saturday. Got the notification those shipped. I also, I had, didn't realize this, I had a couple MVP buyback cards laying around. So I ran up to All Pro Sports in Cuyahoga Falls on Thursday or Friday, I think it was Thursday. And I grabbed two jumbo boxes. I want to rip those live. I am recording this Saturday afternoon. I may or may not have ripped them Saturday night, depending on how I feel. As of right now, probably not, because I'm five minutes in and my voice is fading fast. So sometime early this week, I would like to rip those two jumbos live. Um, it's really tough to tell what the best format seems to be like for that product. I'm, I'm curious for your expectations or, or results from any box openings that you may or may not have done. I watched Stryker uh, rip a bunch of this stuff. It's obviously hard to hit anything good. It, it's the nature of the beast. It's top series one. It is what it is. It is a fun opening, though. Card design looks great. QC seems to be pretty good. And there are some real fun short print chases. We'll talk about that uh, in a couple minutes here as well. Before we dive too, too much deeper, we must mention our friends over at ComC. Speaking of baseball. They have a tremendous promotion going on right now where you can get an additional 35% off baseball submissions, but that also stacks with fresh pulls. So you could get stuff loaded in pretty cheaply from fresh pulls. I know I want to rip those last two jumbos, figure out what I'm going to send the grading, and the rest is all going to Com C. I got another Com C pile that I have been slowly building up over the last few weeks. So I'm excited to get that stuff out the door. That runs till the beginning of March. So you get a couple more weeks uh, to get stuff shipped out for that to our good old pals over at Com C. If you're not using them, go check them out. It is a great way to move low-end stuff and high-end stuff, but I typically use it more for that one to $10 range, $15 range that I just don't feel like shipping. I don't have the time for it. I'll send them one box. I'll gladly pay them their fees. 
uh, and let them do all the work for me. All you got to do is price it. Pretty, pretty easy. Real quick on this one, I'll drop the information below. Second Fantasy Baseball League is live. $5 entry fee, best ball, eight hours per pick. Uh, the first one just finished up, so I launched a second one. Uh, it's on the community tab on YouTube. It's in my Discord. Link in the description down below for that. Uh, and I will also try to remember to post it in the video description of this video. A little PSA talk. Uh, we have multiple PSA things to talk about. Uh, I did those videos about how fast they were. Definitely feels like they're a little bottlenecked right now. Uh, they got slammed at the end of the month with that special ending. I know I sent in that last minute 10 card, or I'm talking about the January special, the $15 per card one. Um, that got delivered and it sat for over a week before the package even got open. Uh, I am now approaching two weeks. Uh, they opened this on the 12th. It got delivered. Uh, like I said, it was there for over a week. I'm now approaching almost another week and it's still in research and ID. So the front end of the line definitely got bottlenecked the PSA. Now, be curious to see how quick this moves once it gets through that bottleneck we'll see but i do not expect to get this order back in under 30 days as it's already been there from the time it got delivered it's already been there for 17 days and it's still in r d so just kind of keep that in mind hopefully they caught up a little bit uh before these baseball specials start pouring in because a lot of those will be coming as well now I still expect this to be well before, you know, their estimated completion date is April 22nd. That's the full 50 business day turnaround time. Uh, I expect to have this order back by the end of March, most likely, if not sooner. It's still beating their expected turnaround time. It's just slower than what people were used to. And you know how that goes on the old internet. Uh, speaking of PSA, let's see. Let's kind of I'm gonna switch these up the order a little bit. Couple big cards popped in PSA holders uh, from various different places. The LeBron and Brawny dual superfractor auto popped up, graded in a PSA 10 holder. I think this was done by, I don't remember who graded this one, um, but that popped up in a PSA 10 holder. Will be interesting to see what this goes for. Kind of surprised no one put any sort of bounties out on this one. Just with all the LeBron super collectors out there, you think someone would have bit the bullet and threw something out there to try to catch it. The other one, uh, this one was submitted and graded through high-end case breaks on IG. The Otani Ruth 101, the dual pitching one, came back a PSA 10 as well. Kind of impressive on this one since this is a thicker stock card, I believe, uh, because of the nature of the cut auto that is a thicker holder psa case but that one also popped up as a psa 10. we'll see if these end up popping up for sale uh, or if the people end up holding them talk about series one a little bit uh tops came out and finally declared what is going on with this first card logo that was floating around in preview releases that everyone seemed to be confused by so what they have done is the very first card printed of that player on the sheet got stamped with this card, with this logo. So essentially, it's a 101 without a 101 tag on it is, is kind of how I view it. It's a knockoff 101. This was the first card on the sheet, on the print sheet for the first sheet that went through for each rookie in the class the thing that i questioned was and i don't know that any of these have been pulled yet i haven't seen any pop up is this mixed in with the base cards or is it in a hit slot because you watch breakers open series one and they blow through the base cards like blow through it to the point that i wonder how many of these got passed up because they didn't even know they were in there or if you want to put the tinfoil hat on, they knew they were in there, but they were trying to dip. Just saying. I would love to see someone rip one of these on camera so we can kind of see where this is inserted into the pack. Even if it's in the hit slot, if you're blowing through the base super fast 
and they just looks at the corner of the cards usually, you might not catch the same thing with the, I didn't pull an image up of this, but there is a Kevin Hart variation running around for Phillies cards. It's numbered out of 52 uh, because he's five foot two and a big Phillies fan. Are those in the hit slot? How easy is it to tell those? You know, once again, breakers flipping through base in mass. If they're not looking at the full image of the card. Are they going to catch it? Something to keep in mind out there. Back on PSA. The big story from yesterday. I'm sorry, Friday. I'm recording this on Saturday. The big story from Friday. Did a video on this. Panini and PSA seem to be in a little bit of a tiff over AR-15. That's Anthony Richardson. Autos. Where a majority of his autographs basically look one way. And now all of a sudden, uh, and especially in Prism product, some of them look a little bit different. So they have basically held off on slabbing those questionable autos. Uh, once again, I did the video on it, and then shortly after I did the video, PSA posted a statement. And here, in a reply to someone, uh, there are outlier cases such as this where we will get further clarification. We will not hold her examples of this card that feature the questionable autograph. So, once again, if you look at his autos on eBay, a large majority of them all look the same, and then now there are these handful of ones that do not. The way that I read this is, is that those ones that look a little sketch are the ones that they are holding off on slabbing pending further information from uh, the athlete and Panini. If they're legit, my speculation is, is maybe he signed them with a bum shoulder. If they're not legit, now we got a whole other ball game on our hands. Uh, and that will be, trust me, if that happens... Uh, there will be a billion YouTube videos made about that from all parties involved. So we'll see what happens there, how that all plays out. Uh, but just buyer beware right now if you are hunting for AR autos. I did notice in a couple of Facebook groups yesterday, within about 10 minutes of this initially breaking, uh, there was a couple of people trying to very quickly sell AR autos that looked a little questionable uh, in some various Facebook groups, I got a little bit of a chuckle out of that, trying to move off of them before people got wind of the news. Talk to Caitlin Clark yesterday. Let's talk a little Wemby today. Uh, Tops now put this up. Nice little auto. Thousand points. Uh, there were maybe like 100 of these, 150 of these. They sold for 2250 I think they were. They sold out nearly instantly. So nice, cool, quick little profit there uh, for Tops off the Tops Now Auto. They really have not put a lot out with his autograph on it, which then kind of sent me down a path because we get Prism releasing this week uh, with more, you know, parallels and all that sort of thing, but no autographs, obviously. I was curious to see, because I really haven't paid attention to his Bowman University cards much over the course of the season. I was interested to see how the PSA 10, the base, held up versus the auto. So, because this is the first real instance of this, where we have an athlete that has first Bowman autos in a non-professional uniform uh, that's exclusive to Fanatics, that has licensed, you know, fancy shiny cards basically prism cards, but no autographs and kind of how the market's treating those two different things. So this is dating all the way back to the summer. So before the NBA season, this is right around the national, the PSA 10 base card, and it is air quote short printed. There's only 158 in a PSA 10 pop um, has basically stayed flat to slightly down. Um, you know, there's these couple of real high sales right at the beginning here at around 1.5K. But this has basically been a $800 to $1,000 card pretty much the entire time since the summer. Now, even though he started playing well, and you could see it did get a little bump up at the beginning of the NBA season because the NBA season starts around Halloween. You could see it gets a little bump in the early season, and then it goes back down again and flattens out. Now, what happens here? And through this section, Panini releases came out with 
regular cards in them. So now you could chase licensed versions of his various chase cards out there, refractors, purple scopes, pixie dusts, whatever it is. So all of a sudden, the base card, which has no extra you know, special value on it, slows down and basically flattens, even though he's been playing great. The autograph card, which is the top one, currently going for almost 5K in a PSA 10. Same thing over the summer. It was kind of flat. Season started, spiked way up, got all the way up to 5.5K at one point in time. Slowed down a little bit around the same time as this one once we got release product, but has held up much, much better. It dropped just a little tiny bit over just a couple spikes and then flattened out and has actually been picking up steam again as he's been playing really, really well again the last couple weeks. Uh, he's kind of like leveled up again, maybe closing the gap on Chet for NBA Rookie of the Year. Over the summer and early fall, uh, this was around a $2,000 card in a PSA 10. It spiked up. Those high sales were a little over 4K to 5K. Then it kind of settled back in at around a 2 to 3K still about a thousand dollars higher than what it was in the summer and then jumped up once again back into this 4k ish range so the auto has held up pretty well because it's the only thing that's out there the short printed base card whatever you want to call it has not it has i don't want to say died on the vine but it has definitely slowed down that even dipped a little bit uh, if we back this up to um, when the peak happened, look how little the auto dropped off compared to the other one. And then since then, the auto dipped and went right back up again. The base card has just gone straight down, maybe a little bit of an up curve there at the very end. But it has not held up well. The thing that will be interesting to watch going forward, can we expect the same from quarterbacks? Obviously, we have Caleb Williams, Drake May. Those sorts of guys that have first Bowman cards that will have, you know, Panini Prism, shiny refractors and stuff like that, but won't have autograph cards in the product. Will the auto cards carry on when the base cards do not? Uh, CJ Stroud is one that we could look at for this as well, uh, if you want to do a little bit of a deep dive on that. Um, but for the purposes of this, Wemby has autos have been holding up pretty, pretty good whereas the base card has not. Next, I was curious just to, to see how the box prices of 2022 Bowman University have been doing. Now remember, the drivers on this are both Wemby and Caitlin Clark. Both have first Bowmans in this. I went back to the beginning of the year, uh, to February, basically a full 365 on this. Uh, when they And they launched a little bit before this, but... 200 bucks ish kind of floated in that area dropped down to the 150s 160s kind of sat there around the 150 ranges where they bottomed out at and then as we move into the fall and winter Wemby starts playing really good Caitlin Clark as we talked about in yesterday's video is on an absolute tear now all of a sudden these box prices are up to 250 240 bucks uh, and you know they were steadily climbing looks like they plateaued jumped up again and replateaued again so we'll see if there's another jump in them maybe after all the caitlin clark nonsense this weekend and see where they settle in at but uh these continue to perform pretty strongly as we moved into basketball season on the bowman university take a quick little look at baseball top series one 2024 Looking at the gold foils, these are jumbo exclusive, so they're a little bit more rare. And as always, when I look at this stuff, I am more interested in the kind of tiers of players on how they're selling more than the overall prices, because prices are going to continue to fluctuate on this stuff as more and more product is ripped. Ellie Dale Cruz gold foil going for about 100 bucks. Pretty big drop off of Jason Dominguez at around 60 bucks. Now he is hurt coming into this season. Evan Carter, kind of in a tier by himself at 35 bucks. So you kind of have those as the big three, but a pretty big separator between all of them. 
after those three, everyone kind of gets jumbled together. You know, we have Henry Davis down here, Colton Kowser, Nolan, Encarnacion Strand, uh, Geloff, all kind of filtering down in the $10 to $15 range. And then it filters down from there. I took this one step further in the Ellie Jason Dominguez department. I was curious how their first Bowmans have been doing. And it's kind of interesting. They're actually selling pretty close together. You can get PSA 10 first Bowmans of both these guys for around the same price. Jason Dominguez is going for about 800, 800 to 900 bucks. Ellie's going for around 800. Pretty similar pop reports on these two guys. And once again, like clockwork, uh, and we mess this up every single year. During the season, they were high flying. And then look what happened around Thanksgiving, October. Uh, here's early November. You could have got a Jason Dominguez for 600 bucks and an Ellie Daily Cruz for 600 bucks. And then look what happened as we have approached the season. They have climbed steadily up to where they are now both in the eight to $900 range. Um, once again, that late October, early November through Thanksgiving buying window on baseball prospects or just baseball in general continues to remain undefeated. And actually, one thing I have noticed this time digging through this stuff is it feels like that timeline moved up a little bit. In the past, it was already, it was usually around Thanksgiving. This time on a lot of stuff that I've looked at, it seems like it was closer to Halloween. So I'm wondering if people caught on to that and started buying around Thanksgiving again and prices were already starting to creep up as people were trying to get ahead of that game. So just always something to file away uh, as we move in the next season. Last thing I want to look at, and then we are wrapping this thing up because I am dying. Just a very quick look at Mahomes and Purdy one week post Super Bowl. Mahomes has been floating right above that 4K range uh, since the game. Not a major increase as we discussed earlier this week. Purdy has continued to decline. He is now down to $725. That's about a 15% drop over the week. That's all I got for you, boys and girls. Maybe a lot. If I didn't uh, open those two jumbo boxes on Saturday night, which I probably didn't the way I feel right now, we'll go live early this week and open those either maybe Monday or Tuesday if I'm feeling better. Join the Fantasy Baseball League. I'm not sure if there's going to be a Monday video or not. We'll see how I feel. Catch you, boys and girls, on the next one. Peace.